Crews come under starter's orders. In lane one, top of the pitcher will be Poland. In lane number two, Romania. In lane three, Netherlands. Lane four, Great Britain. Lane five, Italy. And lane six, in the pinkish boat closest to us, Germany. Now, this is a crew that's going to be rebuilt or is in the process of being uh, rebuilt through to Beijing again. Steve Gunn uh, looking after that. A very able coach. Coached the Silver Brothers and myself back in Barcelona in 1992. Got a few results since then as well. But uh, it's going to be a, a crew down that, you know, an event that really needs a lot of care and attention. Big, that's a real youngsters, real youngsters and a good building process. But he's got time. Each, each, uh, each Olympian, Olympic cycle, it's been a building process. And the same was true of the Sydney 8, which won its gold medal. They're away first time, they're away clear. And they're away fast. Germany closest to us. Look at them. They are just pounding it. In the blades go, down the legs. It's fast and it's furious. And then alongside them in lane five, Italy, Carlo Monazzi there, pushing the guys through in the stroke seat. And then inside them in lane number four, we've got Great Britain in the white boat. And through now 200 meters top rate. They're at the maximum speed here before all the coxes now start to call them down. But really, in, in eight racing, it is about sprinting. It's about going off on about 45, 46 strokes per minute and then coming down to the sort of high 40, or low 40s, 40, 40, 41. You're right, it is a sprint, but it's got to have rhythm to it. It's got to have run where the, the boat is traveling between the strokes because if it's just bang, 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 high rate, high rate, you're not allowing the boat to get to, uh, develop any speed. So it's very, very important that they send the boat away at the finish of the stroke and between the strokes, as they're recovering and coming forward, the boat is running and working fast for them. But here's Germany. Germany have got six people back from their Athens uh, fourth-placed eight, uh, and they are looking very good, and they're pretty determined here. They were very disappointed by that Athens result. But six of them are back here. Poland at the top of the uh, camera in the worst lane, at the top of the picture in the worst lane. They've got seven people back from their uh, boat that came eighth, uh, uh, but it's Germany in front. Through 500 metres, and Peter Thiedi, the cox of the German crew, is just pushing his men on now. They're lengthening out the stroke, they're long strokes, but alongside them, the crew from Italy in lane five. And the Italians are great racers. We've seen that at World Championships, but we've seen that at Olympic Games, whether it's been in the men's aid or indeed the uh, Coxless Fours. And you've got to get clear of the Italians because they know how to hunt you, they know how to charge, and they charge on every single stroke. Well, Italy have got four men back from that Athens 8 that came seventh. Uh, if Great Britain can be in here amongst them, if they can get into that into the top three, that will be a terrific performance from them. They're, re they're racing in the middle of the field there. Uh, it, it's, it's a good position to be because they can see where everybody is. And at the moment, they're holding third. Dan, they're in a good position there, as you say, because they're moving uh, away now from the crews on the top in lane one, Poland, lane two, Romania, in lane three, Netherlands. Netherlands again, you know, Olympic silver medalist. They're pretty, pretty strong boys here. But yeah, we're looking they... at Germany now powering away. That's very good economical rowing there. They're handling the... And the bigger boats all, always have a much, much easier time in the rough water. It's a much more stable platform. It's not being affected so much by the waves in the, as it is for the single scullers. So here you've got very stable boats. They're rowing very well together to come up to the halfway point. 1,000 down, 1,000 to go is the final of the men's eight. It's the opening regatta of the 2005 Bearing Point Rowing World Cup Series, and Great Britain are positioned in third place. Now, do you know, if they just move on in this third five, if they have a good sprint, if they take the race on to the Italians, they could find themselves in a good sort of silver medal position. The, the thought really is don't settle for bronze here, because you could get quite comfortable, you're clear of the crews behind you, and you're thinking these guys are too far ahead, whether it's, it's Germany or Italy. They've got to hunt now the Italians, which they're starting to do. Well, Gary, just behind them, they've got the Dutch, who are the Olympic silver medalists, although this is a completely new lineup. Um, but the Dutch are always great racers, and they will push hard, they will push them very hard. Uh, but you're absolutely right, if they can take on Italy, and with Carlo Monati, who was supposed to have retired, actually, but he's still sitting there in the stroke seat of that boat, of that uh, Italian boat, uh, he will probably not be fully race fit. And you can see now that the Italians are beginning to struggle. They're finding it quite heavy there in the last part of the stroke. You see, they're really tugging away at it. And the Great Britain 8 is it's just moving up stroke by stroke. Now, as a coxswain, this is where you can really make your name in the closing stages. Asa Nethercott is in the coxing seat of Great Britain. It's about moving them on there, it's bringing them all together, making sure they're doing it together and believing that they can create 
even more speed because across all those boats there, there is one thing they have in common. It's absolutely painful. Through 500 now, through 1500, 500 to go. And again, the race is just developing and developing. Now, all these crews would have started their sprint at about 600 meters out, but they're going to have to go again because uh, the British boat in the white there, in the middle of your picture, they're being pushed on by Netherlands in lane three. So they've got to have one focus on the Italians ahead. They've got to have half an eye on the uh, chasing crews in Netherlands behind them. And out front, in the pink boat, Germany continue just to parrot. Watch that. Look at their legs. Their legs go down, and they just hang off the blade, and they create yours, power. If you look at the, at, the, at the blades, they're still a bit messy there. They're, a bit, uh, they're, they're not going in at the same time. They're not being carried at the same height. But they have got tremendous power. They are moving that boat along very well. But Great Britain really trying to push on the Italian. Asa Nevercott, who's another one of the Oxford boat race winners this year, he was the Cox there for the last three years, pushing on now, 200 metres to go, and they can still make it against that Italian eight. 200 to go, and there's about a quarter of a length down for Great Britain off the silver medal position. They've got to now start to, as we say in the business, crank it up, keep the length, but to start to increase the uh, rate speed. Out front, in the pink boat, safely, comfortably, Germany. The Italians are hanging on. That is all they're doing because they put their effort in the first thousand meters and the Great Britain crew have to keep their head up because they're in the bronze medal position. They're clear of Netherlands. Germany take the gold. Italy are going to take the silver and Great Britain will take the bronze medal. It's a great start for Great Britain there on this very long road to Beijing. They've got everything to be proud for there because it was a push from the Netherlands in that closing stages but on the day the German crew from start to finish in first place yes good performance though from Great Britain they were not in the uh, best of lanes they were in the worst of the three lanes there uh, but they held on very very well they looked very cohesive in this last part built it up very well over the last 500 meters a lot to do and a very